Hello, my name is Hannah Matron. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to present a project that I've been working on at the University of Texas at Austin Libraries. It is one of the AI-focused projects that I'm investigating with Aaron Choate, the Director of Research and Strategy. This project explores how we can potentially enhance library services with conversational AI. The output is the things we've learned along the way and a testable proof of concept for this idea, a library assistant chatbot. Today, I'm gonna to run through some background information and talk about some of the research that went into the design of the chatbot. And then I'm gonna show you the design in the VoiceFlow platform and I'll end with a live demo. Why this project? There was a space that might be useful and an opportunity to experiment. We have an Ask a Librarian chat service that's been in operation for about 10 years. It's staffed by librarians and GRAs and is very valuable to our community. However, it is not available overnight or on holidays. So there was an opportunity to extend the hours of operation with AI. We also wanted to get a better idea of how and whether our values and the high standards of service that we have could be incorporated into a chatbot's design. We began this project with a topic analysis of our historical chat log. We looked at the first and last two weeks of the fall 2022 semester. We were looking for trends in questions and responses. The big takeaways were that though there is a lot of variety in the questions, they fit into just a few broad categories. 51% are research related. 34% are general library questions, and 13% are related to accounts or technical support. Also, most of the responses, about 70%, include referrals to websites, to subject area librarians, or to library departments. This gave us a good idea of the information that our chatbot needed in order to be useful and also of the response norms of the service. In February 2024, we held interviews with five librarians over Zoom. All five had extensive experience in both the field of librarianship and also with the Ask a Librarian service. We are so grateful to them for sharing their thoughts with us. And uh, after analyzing the interviews using qualitative coding and pulling out themes that stood out, four key insights really came to the forefront. So I'm gonna talk about how we incorporated those into our design. The first was transparency. That means being clear about who or what is interacting with the user on the other end of the chat and how the conversations will be reviewed and used to improve the services. So we built that into our design in our demo by including a disclaimer and giving a viable alternative. In this case, it's a blog post with demo videos for users who aren't comfortable with the terms as we've outlined them. Secondly, accuracy. It's a well-known pitfall of large language models, which we address by instructing the large language model to give resources instead of answers. In addition to avoiding some of the people-pleasing hallucinations that LLMs are given to, this has the added benefit of costing less in inference and using less energy than maintaining and integrating an enormous knowledge base to cover the large amount of variety in questions that come to the chat. So I'll show you what that looks like in the demo. Third, the librarians we interviewed wanted to scope the chatbot so that it would help with tasks that the library is designed to help with, but not, for example, write a paper for a student. 
to address this and increase our control over the conversations, we used a traditional conversation design with large language model steps. And last, we wanted to foster the human connection that is such an important part of the educational experience at a tier one re research university like UT Austin. So to do this, we still want the chatbot to refer students and researchers to subject specialist librarians on our campus who are here to help them deeply investigate research queries. To keep us on track and set ourselves up for success, we used rubrics in our design process. First, the ALA Code of Ethics. As you know, it provides guidance on uh, professional values and ethical responsibilities like intellectual freedom and equitable service. The other rubric we used was Microsoft's Guidelines for Human AI Interaction, which are best practices in AI user design. That includes, for example, matching relevant social norms and making clear why the system did what it did. Our practice with both of these rubrics was to go through point by point and answer the question of what each guideline or ethical principle meant in the context of this chatbot project. So now I'm gonna show you the voice flow platform. This is where we built our conversational experience. We have designed a general library flow, a research flow, and a mental health flow. The mental health flow is designed to address any time where a student might express something concerning and should be referred to campus health resources. At a couple of different points in the conversation, user inputs will be matched to intense, which will trigger these flows. Each of these boxes represents a step in the conversation. As you can see, there are arrows that are linking the steps, taking the users on a preset journey. It's a kind of choose your own adventure style chat with the intents and the buttons here, helping users to call their own shots. The gray steps here do not call LLMs. These could be functions, like um, input steps like buttons or text capture or output steps like pre-written text. The green boxes are the LLM steps. Okay. This is a response AI step. It's a place in the conversation where voice flow sends a message to a large language model API and then receives a response back. The response can then be printed for the user in the conversation or stored as a variable. This is where you set the configurations. You can see here, that I have chosen to use the memory of the conversation in addition to the prompt. That's important to give the context of the chat. We can choose here between different large language models. VoiceFlow has integrated Anthropic and OpenAI models, as well as Google's Gemini. We can also set the temperature or the variability and the max tokens or the length. In the system message, I've created the chatbot's persona and set some rules for the response. And I've also given very specific instructions on what to return the, to the user and how to create the links that I wanted to provide. And as you can see here, I've provided a, an example of a good response. So let's try this thing out. 
We're going to click start conversation. And here's our disclaimer. We will agree to that. Now, thus far, nothing has been handled by AI. We have some buttons here that we could click on to take us to different flows, but we're just going to type a question. Um, where can I reserve a room? Also, what computer labs have MATLAB? And now the large language model is going to send us back links to pages where we can find the answers to these questions. And so it sent us to a page where we can find out about reserving a study room. And it sent us another link for um, checking on available software. And the third here is contact information for the, the service desks at the different branches of our libraries. Um, so I'll just show you this. So as you can see, this is a page where we have all the software listed for each library. The great thing about using our website like this, instead of answering it directly in the chat bot, is that if something changes, you know, if some software is no longer available or something is added, we don't have to worry about that in voice flow or with our chat bot. We just are going to get those correct answers by sending people to the website. It also really helps when questions are maybe a little bit more outside of the norm of what we deal with. There's also um, the chatbot can hand back a link to a Google search of our website so that students or researchers could find information in that way as well. Okay, so now we could click on one of these buttons again. We could start over but we're just gonna go straight into the research part of this demo. So um, I will type, I'm researching um, the effects of microplastics on health. Now we're being sent to our research flow and asked if we wanna give any additional context and I will say uh, it's for a environmental science class. We could get resources right away or we can brainstorm some topic ideas. This is a great way to use something that large language models are really good at. Okay, um, so we have our research pads. There are some more choices down here for us. We could get new ideas. We could research a different topic. If we changed our mind, we could say you've misunderstood the topic just in case you know, it's not exactly what we wanted. Um, but let's say that we want to research um, microplastic contamination in drinking water sources. So now we're sending all of this information about what we have in this conversation to a large language model, Claude in this case, and it's gonna send us back the resources that I have specified I wanted to, to give in a, for this specific research topic. So we have a UT Austin libraries search. So this is our catalog. So that's great. They've gotten to our catalog. We have um, a search of our databases. So there are a couple of different things that the large language model has suggested as um, possible keywords to use to search our databases. And we have a LibGuide search. So the great thing about this is that we're taking advantage of the search that we already have on our website. And we're also bringing people to resources that they might not have found on their own because you do have to spend a little bit of time looking for them on our website. 
you know, it takes a, a minute. It's a little bit deeper than just one search. Um, so now going outside of our website, we have a couple of Google Scholar searches. And again, it's about building the searches for the user and then they're here. So then you could change it to something else, whatever, you know, you wanted to follow um, in your research. We have a semantic scholar search. We have site searches, which I think are another great way of taking advantage of something that large language models are good at, which is knowing a lot about sort of large areas of study. So site search is a great way to filter search to only bringing back resources from the website that you specified. But in this case, um, it's going to have the added boost from the large language model of um, being websites that it thinks will be useful for academic research in this area. So we have a World Health Organization site search and the, the search is for microplastics drinking water and it will only bring up World Health Organization resources. Or we have the Environmental Protection Agency or the National Institute of Health Plastic particles in bottled water, nanoplastics may help set stage for Parkinson's risk. So it's a good place to start. Um, there are things that, you know, people might not think of that come up here that can be interesting. American Chemical Society, perhaps. Um, and then we have a, a couple of links for writing and citation help. And we have a web page here where um, there's an email form where a student or researcher could ask for additional assistance, or they can click here to contact a librarian. Now, this is a separate message that is sent to a large language model with, again, all of this context. And in addition to that, it has a list of our librarians and their specialties. So it's going to give back one or two librarians that it thinks might be helpful in this research. And it's going to also give an explanation of why. And something that I really like is that if you click on the website link that is given here, um, we come to a librarian's web page on our website, in this case, Hannah Chapman Tripp, and you can schedule an appointment right here or email her right here. So it's very low friction. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this presentation. If you are interested in our project or in starting one of your own or have questions or comments, please get in touch. We'd love to talk to you. You can also test out the chat bot at the link here. We learn something new from each chat and it helps us to make it better. So don't hold back. And thank you again. <laughs>